Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Dark Snack. I am Dark, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Shodan room on TriHack V. Uh, Shodan is a great tool. If you're not familiar with it, it's certainly something that if you are looking at uh, venturing into the realm of uh, consultant, pen or consultant pen testing, or rather uh, bug bounty as well, it's something that you'll find yourself using pretty frequently. That being said, let's go ahead and dive right into task one, introduction. Uh, so it looks like this room was created by B Sexan. Uh, the B is uh, one of the mods on the Discord as well as the lead mod for the uh, Try Hack Me subreddit. Definitely recommend go and check both of those out if you are not in uh, one or both of them. Uh, and you can follow them here for more content. Uh, and it looks like B also has a blog post on Shodan. So Shodan.io is a search engine for the Internet of Things. Uh, ever wondered how you find publicly accessible CCTV cameras? What about finding out how many pie holes are publicly accessible? Or whether your coffee or your office coffee maker or machine is on the Internet, rather. Uh, Shodan.io is the answer. Shodan scans the whole Internet and indexes the services run on each IP address. Note, if you are following along, you'll need a Shodan premium account. I do have one and I will log in here in a moment so we can just use my premium and you guys can see what it would look like. Uh, so a couple quick notes, Shodan, uh, it is a standalone scanning service that will scan the entire internet. It is great if you don't want to actually scan a target or can't. Uh, this is passive because Shodan is doing the scanning, not you. Um, and you're not interacting with the target in that way, just viewing what Shodan has already collected. Uh, a couple words of warning. Um, Shodan, if you have something connected to the internet, uh, like a just a random website that you're hosting off of a Raspberry Pi uh, that is accessible on the internet, it will show up on Shodan. So just something to be aware of. Um, it's one of the main reasons why you don't want to put stuff out on the internet that is either vulnerable or isn't fully up to date uh, just something to be aware of because it will pop up on here uh, the other thing to be aware of is you won't necessarily know what you're going to run into on Shodan you're going to see a lot of um, whatever is showing on the screen or whatever's up uh, sometimes that's up on an RDP instance uh, just be aware sometimes you don't get the most um, PG-13 content uh, if you're following along with that uh, it's pretty rare to have something happen like that but again this is scanning the entire internet so just be aware of it Finding services. Let's say we are performing a pen test on a company. We want to find out what services run on, uh, or one of their servers run. Uh, we need to grab their IP address. We can do that using ping. So for example, if we were to ping tryhackme.com, uh, this is gonna answer with one of, uh, since um, tryhackme has uh, Cloudflare in front of it, it's gonna answer with the Cloudflare IP address. Um, and it's going to come back with that. Uh, once we do this, we can put the IP address into Shodan and we can get this. Um, and let me go ahead. I'm going to pause right here real quick. I'm going to log into my Shodan account and we can take a look as well. And we're back. All right. I've gone ahead and logged in to Shodan. Uh, I have a premium account from Shodan does a sale almost every year that you can get a premium account for a dollar. Uh, that's usually around Black Friday. So just keep an eye out for that. It usually pops up in the yearly, uh, Black Friday deals threads that you'll find on so or on the uh, on Reddit, uh, especially within the IT services. This is great even if you're not a pen tester. If you work for a company and you don't know necessarily everything that's out on the internet, but you do know what your IP space is, you can take a look through Shodan and just see what Shodan has seen. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and take that address and we'll type it in over here. 10 or 104 26 10 not what i wanted uh 22 9 okay and here we can see that sure enough this is exactly what we expected this is uh try hack me but again it's going through cloudflare uh which is what we expect to hit uh, so we're seeing that cloudflare is accepting connections on 80 and 443 that's what we would expect from a web server 80 is going to be a redirect link. Uh, that is typically, if you try to connect to a website on HTTP, it's going to say, you can connect, but I'm going to move you over to 443, and it'll secure your connection. And that's what we can see in this specific case. And sure enough, on 443, we can see that we get a 200 response rather than forbidden with this. Uh, and that means that we're accepting connections on the secure port, not the insecure port. And again, what we expect. And everything else down here is just going to be different. Um, 
certificate information. I'm not really sure what's going on with these uh, high ports. Um, it looks like it's a bunch of garbage. Uh, and even though that's something that it looks like they're all blocked is forbidden anyway. So nothing really of interest. But we can see that Cloudflare again has their uh, SSL certificates on this. So it means that we're passing through Cloudflare. All right. Uh, ours looks a little bit different from that. We have a lot more technologies that show up. So we can see that TryHackMe runs on Cloudflare in the United States and they have many ports open. Uh, and it looks like our port selection, we have a few more than this about the same. Cloudflare acts as a proxy between TryHackMe and their real servers. If we were pen testing a large company, this isn't very helpful. We need a way to get their IP address. Uh, and we can do this using uh, ASNs or autonomous system numbers. So autonomous system numbers. An ASN is a global identifier of a range of IP addresses. If you're an enormous company like Google, you likely have your own ASN for all of the IP addresses you own. Uh, think of this as a bucket that all of your IP addresses live in. Uh, it's a way that we can label blocks of the internet and who owns them. Uh, Amazon has several ASNs from what I'm aware. They just have a ton of infrastructure. Google does as well. I know Facebook has a lot of ASNs. Um, as you're doing research specifically for uh, bug bounty, uh, you'll see a lot of demos like Jason Haddix has in his uh, uh, methodology talk. He will show how to get ASNs usually for Twitch or for Tesla. And you'll see that most of these companies own at minimum one, usually a couple ASNs, if not more. So ASN, we can take uh, put the I, we can put the IP address into an ASN lookup tool, uh, such as, and we'll take a look at that in a moment, which tells us they have ASN uh, 14061, and we can go ahead, we'll take the IP address from here. We'll just take it from the end of our URL, maybe, copy, and then we'll paste this in here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. And we can see that, uh, again, it's owed by Cloudflare. Nothing really interesting there. Um, I'm not seeing specifically where we're getting our ASN number. Uh, however, we're seeing that uh, it, it, again, is owned by Cloudflare. Not really useful to us. So let's see. TryHackMe is in a mega large corporation. So, we, uh, yeah, we don't have our own ASN. Um, that is because all if it, most of our infrastructure is burnable and it sits on AWS anyways which it's constantly changing, as you've seen from, uh, well, everything's private anyways. It's just on internal networks. Uh, when we Google AS14061, uh, we can see it is a DigitalOcean ASN number. Uh, we did have some stuff on DigitalOcean for a little while, and that's why that's popping up. On Shodan.io, we can search using the ASN filter. This is ASN colon and then the number, where number is the number we got earlier, which is AS. 14061. So we can go ahead and take that and we'll take a look over here and ASN, paste that in. And let's see. Oh, no space. That'll do it. There we go. So we can see everything that's owned by that ASN. And there is a lot of results. This is what we expect. Cloudflare is massive. They have a lot of IP addresses because they have to route everything through. And they do um, balance, or load balancing specifically when attacks are happening. Doing this, we can see a whole range of 6.2 million websites, uh, in fact, that are on one single ASN. And in this specific case, we can see that it was a little bit lower, 5.7. But I mean, even then, that's still an absolute ton. Um, we can see the example feedback here. Uh, interesting things that I'm seeing right away. This next cloud floating, or floating on DigitalOcean, that's interesting. Um, and that's something that Nextcloud is a private cloud that you can host yourself. And that's something that if I were pen testing a large company, this would stick out immediately. Knowing the ASM is helpful because we can search Shodan for things such as coffee makers or vulnerable computers within our ASN, which we know if we are a large company is on our network. Uh, sometimes when you plug a coffee maker into the wall, uh, if you're working for a really big company, if the internet's not configured up correctly, uh, that coffee maker will beacon itself out to the internet and have a public IP. Uh, that's a little bit more rare, but it happens. Getting started. Time to dig in. If you're stuck, look at the previous task for some help. So banners. To get the most out of Shodan, it is important to understand the search query syntax. Uh, that, that's just what we're typing in the search bar in this specific case. Devices run services and Shodan stores information about them. The information is stored in a banner. 
Uh, this is also what Nmap does when it does banner grabbing, and that's how we get um, the base information about what service is running. Uh, it's the most fundamental part of Shodan. So an example banner looks like this, uh, and this is just a JSON um, bunch of data. Uh, it looks like we have Moxa import device, authentication disabled. That's interesting from the get-go. Uh, we have the name. This is something that we would look up to see if there's a specific di or device uh, from this company, the StarHub Mobile, that uh, if that's a naming convention, if we can find out what generation that is, uh, we can usually find quite a bit more. Uh, this has our IP address, the MAC address, and then the port, as well as it looks like a country code. So we're looking at the output of a single port, which includes information about the IP and authentication details. You don't really see this outside of the API, so we won't delve into this. Uh, and again, we didn't see that on Shodan when we were looking. Um, it's just good to know what this is looking for, or looked like, rather. Uh, so we'll go ahead and mark this as complete and dive into task two, getting started. Time to dig in. If you get stuck, look at the previous task for some help. Uh, what is Google's ASN number? Um, we can look up google.com, and I'm sure we're going to find it here. Uh, just a nice 1 million uh, results. Let me go ahead. I will search for this in just a second, and I'll be right back with our answer. All right, we're back. We're going to go ahead and try this. So going back to our ASN lookup tool, um, I noticed that it takes company name, um, and if we go to Google, it looks like Google owns a number of uh, ASNs. Oh, there's our ASN number. So this is likely the ASN that we are looking for. Uh, if we take that, we can put that back in. And let me go ahead. Looks like they own a couple, so we'll see which one it might actually be. Oh, here we go. There's our bottom one. That is probably correct. There we go. When was it allocated? Give the year only. Uh, that is going to be 2000. It's been around for 20 year, uh, 21 years now at the time of the recording. So I think it's 2020. Uh, where are most of the machines on this ASM number physically in the world? Um, I'm going to guess this is United States because that is a U.S. ASN number. Uh, and it specifically said Google U.S. right there. Uh, what is Google's top service across all of the devices on this ASN? That is going to be www more than likely. Um, let's go ahead and try this. Um, actually, let's see. We'll take a look at this. Uh, we're going to take that ASN and we'll see what we get. Just for fun. And we'll see what we have. Oh, SSH. No surprise there. And for those of you that missed it, I caught that over here on the side under top services. And it's that by a, a decent margin over HTTPS. This is what I expected. What SSH product does Google use? Um, I'm going to guess this is OpenSSH, but we'll find out. Yep, OpenSSH. So we'll grab this. Copy that. And then put that in here. What is Google's most used Google product according to the search? Ignore the word Google in front of it. Um... This is going to be an interesting one. Open SSH when we do SSH. Uh, okay. Let's go back, see what we have for devices. Top products. Okay. Uh, I'm going to guess Google Cloud here, it looks like. And that looks like it fits. And there we go. Let's go into task three, filters. Filters. On the Shodan IO homepage, we can click on Explorer to view the most upvoted search queries. The most popular one is webcams. Now, this is where things get interesting. Um, this was one that I'm going to avoid just because you never know what you're going to get. Um, and I do not recommend going through and crawling through webcams. Uh, that's something that, again, try to restrict your testing to what you're authorized to do. Uh, note, this is a gray area. It is legal to view a publicly accessible webcam. Uh, you never know what you're going to see on it, though. Uh, it is illegal, though, to try to break into a password-protected one. Use your brain and research the laws of your country. Um, again, just for safety, I recommend this is something that I would avoid. Um, again, don't break into things you don't own or don't have permission to test. 
one of the other most upvoted searches is for my SQL databases. And we'll go ahead and pull that up. And you can see that we just have a ton of SQL databases that are sitting out on the internet. Uh, 3.9 million for that matter. If we look at the search, we can see it's another filter. Um, and we can see that up here where it's a product and my SQL. Knowing this, we can actually combine two searches into one. On TryHackMe's ASN, let's see if we can find some MySQL servers. We can use this search query, and we'll go ahead and copy that in. Put that right there. And it looks like we have uh, 87,000 MySQL products on this ASN, which makes sense because it's a virtual hosting company. And ta-da, we have MySQL servers on the TryHackMe ASN, which is really the DigitalOcean ASN. Um, and you can view the results of that search just right there. Shodan has many powerful filters. My favorite one is the Vuln filter. Let's search for IP addresses vulnerable to an exploit. Let's say we want to find an IP address vulnerable to Eternal Blue. So we'll go ahead and copy this. And we'll put this in here and see what we get. Uh... Okay, well, it looks like I can't do that on my account. Uh, that kind of makes sense because this is something that I don't uh, think that normal users should necessarily be able to do uh, just because the API can get you a lot of dangerous things very quickly. Um, that's fine. However, this is only available for academic or business users to prevent bad actors from using this. Whoops, I guess I was a bad actor today. Uh, <laughs> city, uh, country, uh, geo coordinates, host name, net, based on API ciders, uh, OS, operating systems, uh, port before and after timeframes. It looks like we have several other things that we can do with this. Uh, so the API, the Shodan.io uh, uh, has an API, it requires an account, so I won't talk about it here. If you want to short the Shodan API, I've written a blog post about finding pie holes with it here. Uh, and this is something that I would definitely recommend checking out. This is a really interesting read. I've taken a little bit of a look through this article, but it's definitely worthwhile checking out especially if you want to make sure that you don't have anything that's sitting on the internet that you know you shouldn't have sitting on the internet so definitely worth checking that out i will put this in the video description as well for those that are just watching the video the api lets us programmatically search shodan and receive a list of ip addresses in return uh, if we are a company we can write a script to check over our ip addresses and see if any of them are vulnerable uh, P.S. You can automatically filter on Shodan by clicking things in the left-hand sidebar, which we did before with clicking into different stuff like, uh, I don't know, things uh, like the OpenSSH and things like that. Uh, how do we find Eternal Blue exploits on Shodan? We can go ahead and grab this, maybe. Um, this is something that, again, you would also be interested in as a bug bounty hunter because if you have a company's ASN, um, and you know that the entire ASN belongs to that company, going through and scanning for things like this, automating this, automating uh, changes in websites, that's one of the ways that a lot of bug bounty hunters get ahead and uh, note those changes as they happen to see if there's anything new or if a bug just hasn't been fixed. All right, let's hop into task four, Google and filtering. Learning to filter with Google. Hint or helpful hint, play or pay close attention to what the question is asking you. What is the top operating system for MySQL servers in Google's ASN? So if we take this, we can go ahead and go back here. And we will click on that. Um, product. Let's see, MySQL. And we'll see what we get. And it looks like top version, we have some interesting things. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, top operating system for MySQL servers in Google's ASN. Uh, top versions, I would imagine it's going to be that. So let's click into there and let's see if this fits. Maybe. I'll give it a moment. Let's copy that over. There we go. What is the second most popular country for MySQL servers in Google's ASN? I'm going to guess this is probably China. Nope, it's the Netherlands. That's an interesting one. A lot of infrastructure is either hosted in the United States or in China. It just depends on where you're at. Um, a lot of that is specifically because China has its own copy of a lot of the internet uh, because of uh, the Great Firewall of China. Just something to be 
aware of. You're going to see this happen a lot where there is a Chinese copy of the site um, and then there's an American uh, or the rest of the world copy of the site. Uh, something to be aware of. Um, and you'll see that come up a lot actually in bug bounties where you will see that there are duplicate sites uh, that aren't necessarily always duplicates. So be aware of that worthwhile testing. Um, but you'll see that pop up where there's a .cn uh, address as well. Under Google's ASN, which is more popular for Nginx, uh, Hyper Text Transfer Protocol or Hyper Text uh, Transfer Protocol without SSL or with SSL. Um, judging by this, it looks like it's going to be the first one. Let's go ahead and take this though. And let's see, under Google's ASN. So we do still care about that. Um, and we want a product of Nginx. Let's see what we get. Uh, it looks like it's going to be HTTP. So that'll be hypertext transfer protocol. We can copy that in. Under Google's ASN, what is the most popular city? Um, this will be an interesting one. Top organizations. Let's see if we can drill down into the United States and see what we've got. Top cities, Kansas City. Uh, I know there are a lot of data centers in Kansas City, so that's not terribly surprising. Did I spell Kansas wrong? <laughs> Hold on. We're going to pause for a second while I figure out what's going on with this. All right, we're back. It wanted the uh, last one on there, uh, which doesn't make sense because it looks like it's Kansas City to me. Um, and as I mentioned, I know that there are a lot of data hosting facilities in Kansas City and Council Bluffs. Uh, this is not terribly far from me, so I know that they've put in a lot of, uh, I think Facebook actually just put in a data center not that, that long ago there. Uh, under Google's ASN in Los, or Los Angeles, uh, what is the top operating system according to Shodan? Uh, that looks like Windows, but we're going to check. Uh, let's see. So we'll click into this, and I'm going to change this to LA. Let's see if I spelled that correctly. And let's see. Top operating system, Pan OS. I have no idea what that is. Okay. I'm going to pause the video because I want to figure out what this is and I will let you guys know. Okay. That was far less exciting than I thought. Uh, it is Palo Alto's uh, firewall <laughs> operating system. Oh, well, now we know. Uh, using the top webcam search from the explore page, does Google's ASN have any webcams? Uh, we'll go ahead and grab this. I'm going to pause the video just because I don't know what will come up from the webcam search and I will be back and report on it once that is done. All right. Uh, it looks like Google does not have any exposed webcams. Good for them. That's definitely something that is great that they're taking on or keep an eye out for that. All right. Let's jump into task five, Shodan Monitor. Shodan Monitor is an application for monitoring your devices in your own network. In their words, uh, keep track of the devices that you have exposed to the internet, set up notifications, launch scans, and gain complete visibility into what you have connected. Very cool. Uh, previously, we had to do this using their API, but now we have this fancy application. You can access the dashboard via this link, and we'll take a look at that in a moment, and you'll see it asking for an IP range. And it looks like we have it there. Um, and if I wanted to, I could get that all set up. Uh, once we add a network, we can see it in our dashboard, and you can see that uh, it looks like this has been added as the name of Nmap, um, and then we have it in our dashboard here. If we click on the settings cog over here, we can see that we have a range of scans Shodan performs against our network. So we have trigger rules. Um, it looks like we have industrial control. Uh, industrial control system, definitely something you want to keep an eye out on and make sure that it's not exposed on the internet. Internet scanner, IoT, malware. So a lot of malware will beacon out on a very specific port um, and it is something that Shodan will track. New service, open database, SSL expired. Another common problem that organizations have is a lot of times someone forgets to pay the bill and the SSL certificate expires. Uncommon and then vulnerable. Uh, so triggers real quick. Triggers are rules that when they're met, cause Shodan to send you a notification. So it looks like these are the different scans we're running. And then if we hit one of these criteria, it is going to send us an email. Uh, so for example, if the malware trigger will send you an email if your service 
looks like it has been compromised or it's running malware software. I might actually set this up on my home network. That is very cool. Uh, anytime Shodan detects a security vulnerability in one of these categories, it will email us. If we go to the dashboard again, we can see that it lays some things out for us. Uh, and you can see that it looks like we have the services, notable ports, if there were anything interesting here, any vulnerabilities that we saw exposed to the internet, um, potential vulnerabilities. These are things that are not concerned, but it thinks that might be there and are worth researching. And then notable IP addresses, which in this case, we've only added one to this dashboard, so we aren't really going to see anything. Um, and this is stuff that we I just talked about. The interesting part is that you can actually monitor other people's networks using this. For bug bounties, you can save a list of IPs and show them or email you if it finds any problems. Very cool. Definitely something that is worthwhile to look into. Um, and you can say you can see that this is a premium product, but again, keep an eye out for Black Friday deals. Uh, having a Shodan premium account is definitely something that you want as a pen tester and will save you a lot of headaches. What URL takes you to the Shodan monitor? We're going to go ahead and grab that right here. Plop that in there. And there we go. Let's jump into task six, Shodan dorking. Shodan has some lovely web pages with dorks that allow us to find things. So this is very similar to Google dorking, but we can dig through this and just find interesting things on the internet using these uh, combination of search terms. Their search example web pages uh, feature some. So some other ones uh, include has screenshot, true encrypted attention. Uh, which uses optical character recognition and remote desktop to find machines compromised by ransomware on the internet. Uh, so very cool. This is actually looking to see if it has a screenshot that's available so we can actually see the desktop. Uh, if the machine looks like it's encrypted and it looks like it warrants attention, I'm guessing. Or this is looking for these, I'm guessing this is looking for these two words actually on the screen. So encrypted shows up, which is something that a malware is going to show up on your uh, RDP screen anyways. And then attention will be the warning thing that pops up as well that says attention, you need to pay so-and-so amount of Bitcoin to unlock your data. Uh, and you can see that there's one specific thing that came out here uh, from that scan. So screenshot.label, ICS, uh, that is going to be industrial control systems. Uh, and it looks like it's cut off a little bit for me, but you can see that there's a screenshot hit there of an industrial control system website. Uh, Vuln CVE 2014-0160, internet connected machines vulnerable to heart bleed. Uh, note CVE search is only allowed to academic or business subscribers, so we can't actually do that one. Uh, solar wind supply chain attack by using favicons. So one thing that not a lot of people realize, uh, you can take the hash of a favicon and see what other sites have the same favicon. Uh, usually those sites are going to be uh, owned by the same owner. Um, this is really useful in the reconnaissance stage of bug bounty. I believe Jason Haddix also talks about this in his methodology talk. What dork lets us find PCs infected by ransomware? We can scroll up. Uh, this is a really interesting one and definitely something that is worthwhile playing around with just to see what's out there. And there we go. Let's jump into task seven, Shodan extension. Shodan also has an extension. Uh, and this is something that I will be checking out here in a little bit because I think I forgot to install this on Chrome or my version of Chrome. Uh, when installed, you can click on it. It'll tell you the IP address of the web server running, what ports are open, where it's based, and if it has any security issues. Really, really cool. This is definitely something that I recommend running in uh, alongside Wapalizer or built with because it'll give you a pretty, uh, uh, from the surface or from a glance, uh, comprehensive view of what you are working with. Uh, so there we can see the extension. I would imagine this probably has a Firefox equivalent, so definitely worth checking out. Um, I imagine this is a good extension for any people interested in bug bounties. Yep, absolutely. Being quickly able to tell if a system looks vulnerable or not based on the Shodan output. Uh, yeah, definitely worthwhile checking out. And this is actually something that I'm going to install right after this video because I forgot to do that. Uh, so PS, that's the official image for the extension. Uh, <laughs> ooh, that's a little blurry. Um, either way, worthwhile checking out. Definitely something you want to dive into. We'll mark that as complete and dive into task eight, exploring the API and conclusion. Shodan IO has an API. It requires an account, so I won't talk about it here. And we mentioned this a little bit earlier. 
if you want to explore the Shodan API, uh, definitely check out this blog post that was mentioned earlier. Again, I will have this in, video, or in the video description below. Uh, and I'll link Jason Haddix's talk, his latest one at the time of recording, so that you can view a little bit more of what goes into the reconnaissance phase of uh, bug bounty hunting. Uh, the API lets us program or programmatically search Shodan and receive a list of IP addresses in return. If we're a company, we can write a script to check over our IP addresses and see if any of them are vulnerable. Uh, P.S. You can automatically filter on Shodan by clicking things in the left bar that was over here um, and then read the blog post above. Definitely worthwhile checking out. And we're going to go ahead and mark that as complete. And that'll do it for the Shodan room. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time and happy hacking.